Hey, it's Yuka. So Apple just dropped their WWDC 2025 keynote and wow, not just because they changed the naming convention to everything being 26, but there are very interesting updates that I'm personally very excited about. We are going to be talking about the new AI features, but what caught my attention is something Apple's calling liquid glass. It's a completely new design language that's rolling out across every single Apple device you own your iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, and even Apple TV. But this isn't just about making things look prettier. This makes all the platform and all devices look and feel like it's part of a cohesive platform. And when you switch from device to device or when you use them in tandem, everything feels completely seamless. So today I'm walking you through the three massive changes that are going to completely transform how you use your Apple devices. Let's start with liquid glass because this is a huge redesign that spans across all the OS. So if you're working on your Mac, then pick up your iPhone, then your iPad. Right now, each device feels a little bit different. The design languages are similar, but not quite the same. They have different animation, different transparency effects, and different way things move. And liquid glass is supposed to fix that. It's this new material that Apple's built from the ground up that reacts to light, reflects your surroundings, and dynamically changes based on what you're doing. But here's the genius part. It's not just beautiful. The material actually helps you focus on the content. On iOS, the tab bars shrink when you scroll, so you see more of what matters. On Mac, the menu bar becomes completely transparent, making your screen feel larger. I think these changes will make your current devices feel even better and I can't wait to try. Okay, so Apple Intelligence was announced last year and I think honestly, Apple has been struggling in the past year to deliver some of the personalized Siri features. Although we did not get a concrete answer on when, Craig Federighi says that Apple is continuing to work to deliver features that will make Siri even more personal and that they need more time to reach their high quality bar. He said that more details will be shared in the coming year, so we'll have to check in about that in the future. The personalized Siri part was a little bit disappointing to be honest, but there were some really cool AI updates today. First, there's new live translation feature in messages, FaceTime, and phone. In messages, your messages will be automatically translated, and in FaceTime calls, you can see translated live captions. In phone calls, your words are translated as you speak and the translation is spoken aloud for the call recipient. Visual intelligence now works on everything on your iPhone screen, not just the camera. This is initiated by taking a screenshot, then you can search or take action on what is in the screenshot. You can ask ChatGPT questions about what you're looking at on screen, or you can search on platforms like Google or Etsy to find similar images and products directly from the content on your screen. If you're interested in a specific object like a lamp, you can highlight it to search for that particular item or similar objects online. It also recognizes when you're looking at an event and suggests adding it to your calendar, automatically extracting and pre-populating key details like date, time, and location. The great part is that most of this runs entirely on your device, so no data is sent to Apple servers, plus there are no monthly subscription fees. And one of the really great things is that Apple is giving developers direct access to their on-device foundation model. The same AI that powers Apple intelligence can be used inside third-party apps. So if you think about what this means, developers can build incredibly smart apps without paying for cloud API costs, without worrying about user privacy and without needing an internet connection. For example, this could look like a photo editing app that understands natural language commands or a note-taking app that can summarize and organize your thoughts intelligently. And this all runs on your device. So I feel like this is Apple's answer to OpenAI and Google except instead of charging developers per API call, they're giving it away for free as part of being on their platform. So this could be great for developers and consumers as well because there's more privacy and potentially lower cost for the developer, which translates to lower cost for consumers as well. But the real magic happens when you combine these AI features with how your device now talks to each other because Apple just made the ecosystem exponentially more powerful. So for creators, this ecosystem play gets really interesting. For example, your AirPods can now record studio quality audio and act as a camera remote. 
while using the camera app or compatible third-party camera apps on iPhone or iPad, users can press and hold the AirPod stem to take a photo or start a video recording. So you can be in front of the camera, start recording with your AirPods and get broadcast quality sound without any external equipment. Studio quality audio recordings work across iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and is supported by Apple apps like camera and voice memos, but also can be compatible with third-party apps. Your iPhone can now make and receive calls on your Mac through the actual iPhone app, and your live activities from iPhone show up on your Mac's menu bar. Here's something iPad users have been begging for, iPadOS 26 finally has a proper windowing system. We're talking fluid resizing, precise window placement, and the ability to have way more apps open simultaneously. Basically everything that makes macOS so powerful for multitasking, but redesigned for touch. We also get expose for iPad. You can now resize windows exactly how you want them and use it like a Mac. But if you wanna go back to the simpler classic iPadOS window management, you can just swipe away to close them all at once. But here's something that's going to be absolutely game-changing for power users. Shortcuts is finally coming to Mac with Mac OS Tahoe, and it's not just the iOS version ported over. It's very much supercharged. First, these shortcuts can run automatically. For example, if you connect to your office display, your Mac can automatically open your work apps, pull up today's calendar, and even adjust your lighting if you have smart bulbs. If you save a file to a specific folder, you can trigger like a whole workflow. But the real magic is that Shortcuts now has direct access to Apple intelligence. So you can build a shortcut that records a meeting, transcribes it using on-device AI, compares it to your existing notes, and then identifies what you missed, all automatically and privately. Shortcuts also integrates with the completely redesigned Spotlight. You can assign quick keys to any shortcut, so typing something in Spotlight can automatically trigger a workflow. Spotlight even suggests shortcuts based on what you're currently working on. So this isn't just automation, it's an intelligent automation that learns your patterns and helps you before you even ask. And here's my favorite random feature. You can now use your iPhone as a wireless microphone for Apple TV when you're doing karaoke with Apple Music Sing. Like you can just grab your phone and start singing like it's a mic. The Vision Pro updates are pretty exciting too. Vision OS 26 introduces spatial widgets that literally live in your 3D space. Imagine having a persistent weather widget floating next to your desk that you can resize and customize or photo widgets that turn into mini spatial galleries. Another thing I have been waiting for since the Vision Pro came out is shared spatial experiences. So if there is multiple Vision Pro users in the same physical room, you can now share the same spatial content. So you and your colleagues or friends can all see and interact with the same 3D model during a meeting or watch a movie together in a shared virtual theater. And remote people can join via FaceTime. Speaking of FaceTime, do you remember those digital personas that everyone said it looked creepy? It was still in beta, to be fair, but Apple completely rebuilt them and made it so much better, at least from what we saw in the keynote. It now has volumetric rendering with incredibly detailed hair, eyelashes, and skin texture. You also get a full side profile views now, and they look so realistic, it's kind of uncanny in a good way. I cannot wait to try this out myself. So what does this all add up to? Liquid glass is not only beautiful, but addresses a real problem, which is the inconsistency between Apple's platforms and could make switching between devices feel more natural. Apple intelligence has potential, especially the developer access piece, though we'll need to see how well on-device models actually perform in real-world apps. And the ecosystem improvements, particularly shortcuts on Mac, could be a game changer for people who actually use automation. This all rolls out in fall 2025 as free software updates and for iPhone 15 Pro and newer, M1 iPads and Macs, and Apple Watch Series 6 and up for most features. So the thing that gets me most excited about these updates isn't any single feature, it's how everything works together. I feel like Apple is playing a completely different game than everyone else, and I think we're starting to see how powerful that approach could be. 
So let me know in the comments what features you are most excited about. And if you're into tech and creativity videos like this, don't forget to subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.